this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I'm going to be showing you how to paint beer glasses and put my version of a pear tree blossom or blossoms on the painted beer glass. Just very simple strokes, very pretty glass. Can you imagine drinking your beer out of this in the evenings or when your guests come over serving them in these beautiful glasses? Well, let's get started and give you something that uh, you'll be able to do on your own. Now, uh, before I start, I always forget, I'm going to do my brushes. I am using a 3 quarter inch plaid one stroke brush. Uh, I don't know that I use this one. I don't want to give you too many of them here. And a number 12 flat brush. And then my favorite fine liner brush, which is by Westonia. And another Westonia fine line brush. A little bit shorter than the other one. And I'd be using them for two different techniques. All right. And I'm forgetting again. Sorry. I feel like this is the first time I've done a video, but it's not. All right. I'm going to be using multi surface folk art berry wine, fresh foliage, thicket, and wicker white. Now, these are folk art paints, as I mentioned. Two are multi-surface and two are just the regular enamels. I am trying to switch over to using all the uh, multi-surface paints, but I do still have a combination of, of brand, or all the same brand, but combination of uh, product. So, anyways, that's what I'm using today. And I am going to be... I guess kind of triple loading my brush because I'm using the fresh foliage and the thicket on one side of the brush and the wicker white on the other. Just going to make a big blossom in the what would I, I would consider the front of the glass and just kind of starting at the front here and just making not little w wiggles but some some wiggling but also some variation in, in the level of the of the petals. See how they, they are not like consistently across across the whoops, I'm gonna turn that the wrong way. Alright, I'm gonna continue on here and just wiggle and pull. And then continue on, pull it in, and if you feel like it's not the right shape or coverage, just go ahead and go over it again. Not a biggie. Let me go ahead and do this again. And like I said, you can feel that center, and if you want, you're going to go over it again anyways, so it really doesn't matter center doesn't have to actually have to be completely filled in. And then you're going to continue on. Now I am a lefty, so anything that I am doing, you might have to reverse it to make it comfortable for your uh, painting skills. But I do want to make sure I mention that to you because a lot of times you do have to start in a different direction than what I'm going in if you're right-handed. Now the rest of these are just going to be partially, I mean they're going to be the flowers but they're not going to be fully opened at all. So just so that you understand that they're meant to be closed and looking like they're closed. Got a little bit of green on that tip which is fine. You can just go over it if you aren't sure about that. And then, if you want to, make sure I'm going the right way here. Kind of do another petal, and I want to make sure I'm getting the white on the top here. Kind of down, not, uh, I keep wanting to do my wiggle pattern, but just bring it back like that. You're just kind of just turning the brush and coming back. And that's fine right there. 
All right, so then I'm going to continue on. And I'm going to turn my, I'm trying to get it to be very similar to the other one. All right. And it's not a very big glass, so really the space that you're, you know, you, you have to work in is not as small as doing a stemless glass, but not as big as some of the wine glasses that I've done. So I just have to make sure that I'm keeping that in mind. That. And I'm going to go over it again. This is just a kind of like a partial bud. Not a bud. I'm not, I'm not saying they're partially. It's not, it's not completely open. It's not open yet. And then I just want to add some other little holes to it. Like on this one, you can go down like this and turn if you want. And then do it back this way too. Turn if you want. And then have it like that. And then on this one, I always like to make sure that I have another flower going the opposite direction so that it, it's like the, the main flower has flowers going both directions, if that makes sense. And then on this one, I'm just going to have to look at it a little bit here because it's more of a smaller... very well. Alright, and then on this one I'm going to do, this is the first time I've done this design, so that's why I'm having to look at it. If it's something I'd painted a lot in the past, I really wouldn't have to look at it. I'd already know. But, I'm just going to do a little swiggly there. Alright, so now we're going to go back over the bigger open flower and I'm just going to wiggle in my leaves and I'm kind of overlapping the actual like kind of like I do with my roses I'm overlapping my leaves or my petals And then just gonna keep going around. And just keep going around it until I get back to the beginning here. And there you have that. Now you can leave it like this if you want, because I do have quite a bit of green in the center. But what I will do when I've done is just put some more of the greens on and then I've gone in and just tapped in kind of like I'm adding a center I'm not really putting a lot more white onto my brush just concentrating on the greens and making it a little darker but leaving the whites of the second petal showing like that It just makes it stand out more when you do this. Makes the center more prevalent, which is what I wanted it to do. And you don't have to do it as darkly. I think my other one was a little bit lighter, but that's fine. They're, they're, when you do painted glass, they're going to be similar. They're not going to be the same. And make sure that you make that clear if you are selling these that they're hand painted and no two will be identical. Now I'm just going into the thicket I'm going to start putting in my center and the reason why I like this long bristled brush so well it's so easy to control and get a nice just a nice looking stroke. Again you're just putting this in here and you're stroking. You want it to come down and up I mean, you can make it like it's going all the way around. I'm just going to have it to where it's coming kind of down, but then back up again. 
Just give it some wiggle there. And there you go. It just keeps going. I mean, you can make it come down even further. Kind of whisk, whisky, whisky. I don't know, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I'm not trying to say whiskey, sorry. All right, so I used it for that. Then I'm going to come back and use the, uh, the shorter bristled liner and I'm going to just tap in, now you can tap, actually tap the two colors in together, but I'm just going to tap them in individually. Just tap, 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 tap. And honestly, if you like to do dots, you could do dots too if you want them. Then I'm going to use the berry wine and then come back in and add the color to the insides. Just like that. And then just keep tapping it. Some can be darker, some can have light, some don't have to. I mean, you can put them lower. And I, as you see, I've pulled some out that don't even have the green. But you can't really tell. I mean, it's just a mixture. Just, just a sporadic little mixture of colors and you know, here and there. It's just fun. Alright, so there you have that one. And you could also mix, I don't actually have a glass uh, medium, so that's why you're not seeing me add that, but you could actually thin down the paint, but not with water. You have to be careful because on glass you really cannot do it you know, don't thin it down with water by any means because that will lessen the strength of the paint. But if you have a glass medium, a flow medium, you could thin it down and do that green on in the side inside. But I couldn't do that since I don't have the right product to do it with. Now I'm going to move on to my number 12 flat brush and I'm going to start putting in the leaves. Alright, well Take that back. I think I'm gonna, I am going to go ahead and use my smaller brush. It's a number 10, and use it for this part because I was having a difficult time getting it to look nice. And basically, what I'm referring to is getting in the parts that show that the flower is connect. You know, is part of the part of the stem. You're not going to actually see the stem. You could pipe, paint the stem of this glass if you chose to do so. Because it's so short, I'm not going to do that. I thought I would at some point. If it had been a wine glass, I might have made it look like the stem was part of it. Um, but I'm not. I'm not going to even mess with it because it's so short. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Just come in here and I'm just putting it on the chisel edge and pulling. Chisel, chisel edge and pulling. I feel like I can't talk today. Alright, and then throwing some light in here. And they're just little thin lines. Not anything thick. Wait, I guess that one I made a little thicker. Maybe I'll make this one a little thicker. And then I'll come around and do the same thing for this one. Yeah, that's why you need different size brushes a lot of times so that you can actually and just tap them in. And there you go. Now we're going to go to the 12. And I am doing a combination of the fresh foliage and the thicket. And then I'm just going to start adding in these. Now I'm not doing a variety, not switching them around. If you've seen some of my other videos, you can do, 
you know, a variety of leaves. I am just doing this kind where I'm going to go down, tip, and then back. Now on this type of a leaf, if you want to go ahead and draw in your little, like a vein, then you can go ahead and do so. I'm not worried about how I'm placing these on here, if they're similar to the other one. I'm just doing it as I feel they fit. This one I'm going to go ahead and do this. Put it in and pull it back. It's okay, a-okay to do this and then come back in and then pull, pull your little stem through there. And then I'm going to trim my glass because I want to make sure it's going the most comfortable direction for me to continue painting this design. And that's one thing you need to keep in mind is to you know turn your turn your glass while you're painting it. It's the advantage of painting on glass is the fact you can turn it. All right, so here we have another one. And keep in mind too, when you're painting, if, if you're painting on a different surface, a wider surface, a canvas or whatnot, you know, you would your painting would look different because you would have more room. When you're painting on glass, you're just limited, which is fine. I mean, I, I don't mind that. But I'm just saying, you know, keep that in mind. You, know, you might be able to do a lot more if you were just painting on a regular surface. All right, now this one, I'm just going to go wiggle, 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 bring it back in. And if I feel like I need to go over it again, I'm just going to do that. Anybody that watches my videos knows that I like a, my paint to be more opaque. All right, I believe at this point, oh, nope, take that back. thought I had everybody covered. I'm not adding any other kind of leaves to this, which you could. You could add filler leaves. You could add uh, actually other types of flowers. I'm just keeping it simple. And some of my white is still wet, so it's kind of coming into my paint, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I'm going to go over this one again, though, I think. Add some more. Reason being, it seemed like it was getting a little thin over here. A little, a little too thin for my, my taste. Pull it in. But they're pretty. What a great gift this would be. You know, if you get started now and get comfortable with painting, you can have some really awesome gifts for the holidays. I mean, I'm just saying. Just saying. I think I got this side coming back. All right. And then just kind of look around your glass. Where do I need another leaf? And I am going to, just for the heck of it, put one down here. Pull it back in. Again, if you feel like it's too thin, just go back over it again. Get some paint off this brush. I'm going to do it, go over it again, and just, you know, don't be in a rush. Just make sure your paint is on thick enough, because, again, that'll make it more durable. The more paint you have on something, the more durable it is when you're painting on glass. All right, so I think we're going to be done with it for now. And then all you need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Make sure that you've put your glassware in before you turn on the preheat. I add my preheat time to my bake time. The bake time that they request you to do with this type of paint is 30 minutes. So my preheat time is about 20 minutes. With that being said, then not my paint painted glassware is in the oven. Once it once I put it in the cold oven, it's in there for 50 minutes, then I turn it off and then allow it to completely 
cool down before I get it out. The main thing with painted glass, you got to remember, clean your glass bar good before you paint on it. And then put it in a cold oven when you're baking it. And remove it from a cold oven so that it's not a quick change in temperature. That's what typically will cause glassware to break is if the temperature is too cold. Or too cold, I'm sorry. If, if the temperature varies too quickly is what I meant to say. Alrighty, so here you go. Cheers. Until the next video, make sure if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Hit that like and also there's a button underneath the video to share the video with your friends and family on your social network. I would appreciate your help in growing my channel. Alright, have a good one. Until the next time, we'll talk to you then. Mm -hmm.